Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul introduces a new subject and new instruction to the Philippian church. He says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but it is safe. The Apostle Paul uh, um, starts on, on uh, this chapter with a reminder to the Philippian church. And he reiterates this in chapter 4 when he says, Once again, I tell you, rejoice. Uh, chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Uh, it's interesting that the Apostle Paul has to remind the Philippian church constantly about this because it's not in our nature to place our joy in the Lord. You know, we are, we are certainly spiritual beings, but our lives is much more of a physical perception. And because of our, of our physical perception and the, the awareness of the world around us, it's very easy for us to place our joy in things rather than in the Lord. And when, when, when we place our joy in things or circumstances, our joy becomes inconsistent. You know, sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, sometimes we're stable, sometimes we're emotional, volatile, and, and that causes us to live a roller coaster of a life. And in our relationship with God becomes a roller coaster because we're not always up to serving. We're not always up to uh, to making ourselves available because our joy isn't in Him. Our joy is placed on things, whether, whether that's material things or situations and circumstances or even people. Because people will fail us. So the secret, therefore, is placing our joy in the Lord. And the Bible speaks extensively about uh, people who are double-minded, people who are unstable. In James chapter 1, uh, verse 6 uh, he says, verse 5 and 6 uh, and 7, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So the Apostle James is giving an admonition, an exhortation about the, 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 the unstable mind, the unstable man or woman. He is, he is uh, uh, instructing the people of God that we ought to develop a strong belief in God and acquire wisdom in God so that we're not unstable and double-minded. And, 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 and stability is not always, uh, only rather, connected to you know, emotional intelligence or, um, or, or, or even the, the power of the will. It also has to do I think it mainly, primarily has to do with how much we trust the Lord. It has to do with conviction. Conviction is so important. And that only, uh, uh, conviction is only established when we have experience with God. So it's not just a matter of the force of will, the power of your will. It also has to do with your level of conviction on the Lord, your level of experience with the Lord. How much do you trust Him? And it's impossible to trust somebody you don't know. So getting to know Jesus is, is, the, is, is the, main, the main thing that we can invest in in order for our joy to be placed in Him, in order for us to be delivered from an unstable life, an unstable emotional life, because when we know Him, we trust Him. When we trust Him, we have conviction that no matter the circumstance, all things will work for my good. Now, not all things will work for my comfort. That's different. It will work for my good. In other words, it will, it will cause me to grow. It will cause me to learn. It will cause me to develop. But that doesn't always feel good. And that's the difference between joy and happiness, I believe, is that happiness is just a feeling. It's an emotion. Joy is a state of being. 
And that's, that's why Paul reminds the Philippian church. He says, again, I tell you, rejoice in the Lord because the Philippian church was going through tribulation and trials. And Paul was saying, listen, these trials are difficult and you will have seasons of hardship. But if your joy is in the Lord, you will not be unstable. And I'll wrap up with Psalm, the 16th division of the Psalms. Uh, on verse 11, it gives us a powerful insight into how to acquire this joy. The psalmist says, I will show you the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Do you want to be joyful? Come closer to God. Because in His presence, there is fullness of joy. That's what the psalmist says. And I invite you, I encourage you, I hope this word inspires you to desire more of His presence. And as you, as you, you come closer to Him, and as you devote yourself to the knowledge of who He is, you will continue to develop more and more trust in Him, build conviction and confidence in the God that you serve. And in His presence, you will experience fullness of joy, even in difficult times and hard seasons, your joy will be unshaken. I, I hope that inspires you today, and that you're blessed by this word. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus.